Hey guys, how's it going? I wanted to make a little video here to help you out with one of the My Open Math questions here. So I'm going to talk through number four on the week 14 homework here um, and point out to you guys some nice little uh, Excel things that you can do to make some computation much easier for yourself for this problem. In this problem, we're being asked to compare uh, group means across three different groups. Because we're looking to compare across more than two groups, we know that we would like to use a one-way ANOVA test to compare across more than two groups. What we discussed in this week's video, in the, the, the week 14 video for this week where we discussed ANOVA, one of the things that we talked about is that when we want to compare across more than two groups, uh, the appropriate thing to do is to use ANOVA, but technically one of our options, as this problem is going to uh, show you over here, one of our options would instead be to do uh, several two-sample t-tests right here. Uh, since we're trying to compare across three groups to see if any of the means are different, uh, allegedly what it seems like we could do is we could see if groups one and two are different, see if groups one and three are different, and see if groups two and three are different by doing a series of two-sample t-tests. So this problem is going to have you compare the results of your f-test, your ANOVA test right here with an f-test statistic, to the results that you would get if you instead did several two-sample t-tests. However, what we learned in the written homework assignment for this week is that doing lots of these two-sample t-tests is obnoxious because computing that number of degrees of freedom by hand is very obnoxious. So what I want to do is show you a way that you can do a much quicker job of two-sample t-tests in Excel um, so that you don't have to do that obnoxious by hand work here. Um, so I think that you guys know how to do this ANOVA test here in Excel um, based on what we did in the, in, the, in the primary video for this week. So my intention here is just to show you how can we do these two sample t-test comparisons here in Excel so that you can just kind of get these answers directly from some Excel computation rather than uh, doing a significant amount of by hand work. So the most important thing here is we got to make sure we get this data into Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all this stuff. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste this stuff into Excel over here. All right, and so I'm seeing that I'm getting this issue right here uh, that for some reason is cropping up some of the times when I try and select this data. One of the things I've been doing is grabbing from the bottom left right and going up to the top left, and I feel like that has been making the issue not happen. And there we go. For some reason, I copied and pasted incorrectly right there. Uh, so again, my copy and paste every once in a while, it doesn't do what I want, and it puts it all in one big row. But I've been noticing, maybe you can notice the difference here when it's got the finger pointer. I feel like it doesn't work out as well. But when you get the like kind of vertical bar cursor right there, I feel like that does do the highlighting that I want. I have no idea why that works out the way that it does. But in any event, I've managed to copy and paste my data into Excel. So what they're asking us to do here, aside from, by the way, you're certainly capable of uh, computing some group means for each of these guys. Notice that we can do things in Excel like I can do equals average and select these cells here, A4 through A12. And that's going to compute my average to be 78.44. And you can see in this case right here, 78.44 is the sample average that we're looking for there. So that's one quick thing we can do in Excel, get those averages real quickly from a column. But we're more interested though, the, the kind of harder part right here is doing these two sample t-tests right here. So notice that what we're doing is we're asking, are the averages equal to each other or not? So that says to me that my alternative hypothesis is a not equal to statement, meaning to me that we want to do a, a two-tailed two-sample t-test, right? This could be a greater than or a less than. We're just saying that we think that the uh, our alternative hypothesis is a not equal to statement. The two means are not equal to each other. So what we want to do is first compare groups one and two, then compare groups one and three, then compare groups two and three. Those are the three different p-values that they're interested in you computing right here. So let me, I'm gonna do one of them right here and you guys will be able to easily follow here. So I'm going to compare, uh, I guess they're called sections here, section one and two. And so what I'm gonna do to do this is I'm going to use a t.test feature that is built into Excel. So I'm gonna start as we always do when Excel is trying to compute things for us. So I'm gonna start with equals. I'm going to type in T, and you can see our drop-up menu comes down. We've been doing lots of t.dists. t.dist is just going to take in your T information and spit out a p-value. However, you should see in this list there is t.test, and this will perform the entire test based on raw data that we've been given. Since I've been giving you lots of statistics coming into these things rather than the raw data itself, that's why we haven't necessarily been using that t.test as much. Um, we've been using the t.dist uh, associated with our statistics rather than our data. Here I want to do this t.test, and you can see it's the only one option right there, t.test. 
before I kind of click away from this or to keep typing, this says this returns the probability associated with the student's t-test. So what this is going to compute for us is that p-value, that probability that's associated with uh, the result of performing this two-sample t-test. When I open up my parentheses, it's going to tell me that it wants four things from me. I know this is a little small, so I'm going to verbalize this here. It says it wants array one, array two. Those are going to be our two columns of data that we're comparing. It wants to know how many tails we're going to have. That's going to either be one-tailed or two-tailed. Since our alternative hypothesis is a not equal to statement, I know that I'm going to want two tails. Finally, what type of t-test are we doing? We want to remember that we had some t-test where we had a paired or a matched pairs t-test where it was like a before and after test. Uh, this is not a before and after test. These are just test scores from two different sections of a course. So we are not going to be choosing the matched pairs. But we will just be performing a two sample t test here. So let's go ahead and fill out this information. So the first piece of information it wants from me is array one. And I'm going to, by the way, show you two different ways we can grab this information. Since I'm trying to compare sections one and two, I can see that array one should be cell A4 all the way through A12. So I'm going to type in here A4 colon. A12 and that's going to select that entire column for me and I know that it's blue on a purple background right here but you can see that this uh, column has been highlighted in blue associated with these blue colors here. I'm going to go ahead and hit comma and it now bolds array 2. It's now looking for array 2. I want to show you that you instead of just directly typing in these the, the, the list locations here you can instead notice here my cursor is the the the, 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 pl the plus sign right there, the hollow plus sign right there. Um, so that means to me it's actually okay with me clicking and dragging for the cells that I want. And so this is an alternative way. You're, you're welcome to type them in or click and drag the ones that you want. But now in this one, I clicked and dragged. You can see it's highlighted in red associated with the red B4 to B12. That's our second array. So these are the two lists of data that it's going to directly compare here. I'm going to hit comma again. And the only weird thing about these last two inputs is they're sort of looking for like a categorical response from you, but they don't want you to have to type in a bunch of words. So they give you numbers that are associated with each one of these. So again, I know this text is really small. I just asked Google and Google informed me there's no way to make this bigger right here. But what this is saying is it says one hyphen one tailed test, two hyphen two tailed uh, or sorry, one-tailed distribution, two-tailed distribution. We are considering an alternative hypothesis of a not equal to for the averages there. So we are looking at a two-tailed test. So that says to me, because of the two that's sitting right there, it looks like all they want is just two to go in that slot right there. And for the second part right here, it's going to ask us, which of the three different scenarios are we interested in? Is this a paired t-test? And the answer is no, because this is not a before and after test like we looked at before. The other options are just our regular old two sample tests here. We're going to go ahead and assume that these have approximately equal variances here. So we're going to go ahead and select option number two as well for the three types of t-tests that could be performed. We're going to go ahead and choose option two here. And now when I close up my parentheses and hit enter, it's going to give me, this is our p-value right here for comparing sections one and two. You should notice that we were interested in comparing this p-value to an alpha value of 0 0.05. Since our p-value is larger than our alpha value, it looks to me like we are failing to reject this null hypothesis, ultimately concluding it doesn't seem like there is a statistically significant difference between the results of section one and section two, according to this single two sample t-test. By the way, you can see here on my key right here, uh, this decimal right here is exactly matching this decimal, or this is a slightly rounded version. I guess I bet if I open that up. Yeah, there we go. We can see all those decimals matching right there. Um, so this is how we can perform a two sample t-test right here. You need to be able to select two columns of data. Tell it we do want a, in this case, we do want a two-tailed test because our alternative hypothesis is not equal to. We did not want a matched pairs test and we did assume that we're going to have equal variances here. So here's kind of how we get the rest of our parts here for number four. We covered how to do our ANOVA test in our primary video for the week. We can compute a quick average in Excel by just doing equals average and selecting the associated column. And down here, rather than doing a bunch of difficult by hand work, you can instead rapidly do your three two sample t tests that are required for this problem um, all in Excel right here. You don't have to do any by hand computation for this. So you can perform those three two sample t tests right here and then ultimately conclude what you need to conclude there. So this is number four on my open math week 14. And the only other thing I'll say here is number six is also going to ask you to do a comparison between the ANOVA test and a t-test. So in problem number six on this homework, it'll also be the case that you're going to want to do this t-dot test uh, that 
we just did right here. Um, so go ahead and use that information to help you out with this uh, short My Open Math homework this week. And uh, uh, then we'll do our linear regression stuff next week. I'll see you guys then.